What is up YouTube? So for today we are showing you how you can use your wing as a beer holder. No, I'm just kidding. We're showing you what an access port is all about. Real quick guys, before we get into the video, a lot of people are asking about what's going on with my fitment. Just a quick update on that. You guys can see it right now. It's, it's, it's pretty whack. I know you guys saw it in that last video, but yeah. The coilovers are going on, lower control arms are going on, and the tow arms are going on. Man's just needed some wheels. He was on my stocks, yeah. so. Wheels needed to come on. That's it. End of story. Now, we're getting to the access port. Let's do it. All right, guys, to start off with, I uh, just wanna say that we both do have uh, access ports, but it kind of happens that we both have access ports for two very different reasons um, Reasons why I have an access port is because I like to be informed about my car um, I have no performance mods whatsoever. Uh, I primarily just use the access port um, to see uh, You know my temperatures uh, my boost gate use it as a boost gauge um, I use it to get rid of the rev matching. That's Ooh, when that's a dead end. I didn't know. I've never been in this part before, but <laughs> fucking but, jackass. Yeah. Makes me drive down but, the dead end. Why would you take this way, anyways? Because was. A um. But no, I use it once for rev matching. That's when you go from first to second, and the revs don't drop back down. Um. But this gets this uh, gets rid of that and eliminates it. Um. I also use. Uh, my access port as the stage one tune, um, which does help a little bit of performance. I mean, it's nothing dramatic, but that's what I'm running right now um, with no performance mods whatsoever on that. All right, guys. So I saw in the comments that a couple of you asking, "Oh, is it worth buying, getting a tune, or buying an access port, or just blah blah blah, any of that?" So I made the, we made this video just to answer your guys' questions and I have a couple questions that I can pull up while I remember them. There's only about four or five of them. And the first one was, hi, I just bought a 2017 WRX. What's the first mod that I should do? And I said, are you going for performance or are you going for looks? He says, I want to make it faster. So I said, okay, go and buy the Cobb stage one package from Cobb. It was, I think it was $1,100 and that does come with the access port and it does come with an intake. Forget about the intake, I can get into that after. Most of you guys do know what an intake does. There's a previous video, we'll drop that right here if you wanna see that video about an intake. But, so he did, he went ahead and bought the Cobb stage one package and, and what the stage one does, it, Obviously it increases horsepower, obviously you go into boost faster, but other than that, what what the actual benefits of the access port was other than other than gauges is on the performance button here, you do zero to sixty quarter mile. That's no one really uses that. But if you click setup, no not setup. I barely I barely even use this thing. You click or troubleshooting? No, you click tune and you go to adjustments and here you see it says ECU adjustments. If I can get it to focus. ECU adjustments. Adjust idle. Flat foot shift. Launch control. You guys saw in one of our previous videos. Launch control. As you put it into first, you press down on the clutch and it holds revs at whatever you set it at. Probably shouldn't be doing that in the neighborhood. Also, someone asked me what flat foot shifting was, and I personally have never, I've never used it on this car. I had an access port. I should hit this duck. Drop a comment right now if I should hit the duck. Nah, I'm kidding. But yeah, I did, I did use the flat foot shifting on my previous car. I don't really beat on this car. So I, I haven't really gotten into flat foot shifting and I don't plan on it either, because I don't plan on racing. Um, but flat foot shifting is, say you're, say you're on the highway, you're on a street, whatever. 
So what you could, what you do, it's basically shifting without lifting your foot off the gas. So you also stay into boost, and it's a lot quicker shifting. That's that's basically what flat foot shifting is. Uh, if any of you guys, any of you subscribers there, use it. Drop a comment. Let me know how it works. Even take a video because I really don't plan on using it in this car. Okay guys, so there's a lot of things I do like about the access port and there's one thing I really can't stand about it and some days it just wants to make, make me and throw it out the window or just throw it in my glove box and not even look at it. But is if you're running the, the feedback knock gauge or find knock learn, it, it pretty much is inaccurate about the knock boost and air fuel and anything else that's pretty much accurate with temperatures but knock you really can't control knock or you really can't read it unless you're under wide open throttle with your AC off and if you get knock above negative negative two negative three in wide open throttle with your AC off then you have a serious problem. A lot of people have been asking me. I've had people send me pictures. Oh, I just got negative 11 knock. I've got negative seven. Yeah, watch, probably just driving around his neighborhood. I'll get negative something. And I probably won't even go above 20 miles an hour. I haven't even gone above 2,879 RPM. But yeah, really, I really should stop monitoring, monitoring it. It really is inaccurate and it just makes me frustrated sometimes because sometimes I do drive with my AC off. Sometimes I drive with it on. I never really go under wide open throttle too often, just cruising around town. But yeah, some days it's, it's perfectly fine. It stays at 0, 0.0. Some days it stays at, it'll go to negative seven and you're like WTF. And then that's when people start texting their tuners and all that other thing. And the last thing about the Cobb access port, I'm gonna have Evie explain that to you about, about the stages, stage one, stage two, stage three, all that garbage. All right guys, so Cobb primarily has stage one, or stage zero for stock, stage one, uh, stage 1.5, stage two, stage 2.5, stage, and then stage three, um, and then basically like stage three plus. Um, stage one uh, to stage 1.5 is uh, an intake. Uh, stage two to stage 2.5 is uh, is basically um, an intercooler. I'm, I'm sorry, not an intercooler. Um, it's an uh, intake and a downpipe, exhaust. and then uh, yeah, well, downpipe exhaust, and then stage three would go into a intercooler um, intake and downpipe. So it's basically it goes they go up by stages by the amount of performance parts you have. Um, you can choose kind of what stage you want to run. If you just have a downpipe with no intake, you can run stage two, or if you have an intake um, and a downpipe, you can run stage 2.5. Uh, it's really up to you what you want, how aggressive you want to run your car. So right now, Lorenzo's uh, running stage 2.5 because he has um, an intake and a downpipe, and uh, uh, it's, it's a Calis downpipe and an NVIDIA. Um, cat back exhaust which makes it a turbo back makes it a turbo back um, so yeah that's that's about it guys I uh, hope you guys enjoyed our little summary of what an access port is I know you a lot a lot of you guys have been asking um, what it is again this is the first thing I would literally do to any Subaru almost any car because it is like the computer of the car um, it gives you every single source of information you need to know any problems that are going on with it um, it helps you troubleshoot it gives you temperatures it can give you you know your um, quarter mile time half mile time whatever you want to whatever you want to see about the car you know your intake will have it um, you can put little fun fact about it, uh, access port if you don't have one you can actually put whatever picture you want um, on the opening screen so yeah guys uh, quick, thing, quick thing before Evie wraps it up like I said we were just driving around his neighborhood and my knock went to uh, uh, negative 1.41 which is most all Subarus get that exact number I don't, I don't really know that's why. what I get on mine last week I hit like negative 11 but I, I was like and you I was can like see, it has to be from I didn't my even go PC. above 3100 rpm all right guys if you have any more questions feel free to leave comments down below uh, once again we want to thank you for watching uh, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button right down there smash that shit that's all you
Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, you know, thanks for helping us grow. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Uh, this, for now, this has been Beyond Subaru. Peace.